Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I had to chuckle. I was chatting with somebody and uh, they were getting all excited and worked up about a simple question. When you ping from a Cisco device and you trace route from a Cisco device, does it do the same thing on the wire? And everybody started their answers with, it should, it's supposed to, I think, that kind of thing. And I said, you know what, by the time we finished arguing about this, we probably would have done it. So let's quickly do this and I'll show you how I do it. Um, and I'm going to take you through everything from Wireshark through Telnet through everything just just to show you how I go through it. Here we go, right into it. First thing we're going to do is uh, go to Wireshark. There's Wireshark 2.0. And I'm going to go to Capture and Options. The reason why I always start from Capture Options is because I get to go to my Ethernet adapter and I can see my IP address. The reason why that's important is because when I go to my Cisco device, it's a switch in this case, I'll know the IP to ping. So the IP is going to be 1044.10.171. I've already put a capture filter in here. Capture filter is for the switch. That's 1044.10.37. And I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do is click on my Ethernet adapter. I'm going to hit start. And I'm capturing. So now I go to my Telnet client. Press enter. Wants the password. And of course I messed that up. There we go. Doing this for a reason. I want to show you something at the end of all this. So from here, I've I've telneted obviously into the switch. I know telnet SSL. It doesn't matter. It's a lab switch. So from here, I can just simply ping 10.44.10.171, and there's the pings. And then from here, I'll do trace route 10.44.10.171, and there they go as well. So I've pinged and I've traced route and it's all done. So I'm going to come here and hit stop. So one of the things that um, we need to do when we, when we look at a trace like this is there's typically going to be a problem in that you're going to find a lot of data in here that doesn't belong here. So the first thing we're doing is I just did a quick refresh because I had an older filter there. You'll see there's the telnet data, see, because I telneted from the device that I was actually pinging and tel uh, trace routing from, pardon me. So from here we need to do a filter to get rid of the telnet. So what most people do is they type net not space telnet enter. And that's okay, but look, we still have the TCP axe and at the top you'll have a three-way handshake and all that kind of stuff. We don't, we don't want any of this. So you probably want to think this through when you do application filters. You leave a lot of the acknowledgments and sins and acts and you know fins all that nonsense. If it's TCP based, of course, right? So we don't want to do that. So we're going to get rid of the word telnet here. We're going to type port. Sorry, tcp.port double equals 23 because that's telnet. Now I'm going to press enter. Now it's all gone. So that's kind of important to be able to quickly get rid of all the stuff you don't need. And now you're left with what you want. I'm also going to get rid of my packet details and my packet bytes pane. And that looks nice and clean. So there's my, obviously these are the pings. ICMP echo ping request ping reply and if I move down a little bit look UDP see so a Cisco device uses UDP when it does a trace route and it uses ICMP when it does a ping there you go that didn't take long did it now the other reason why I wanted let me just clear my filter for a second the other reason why I wanted to log into it um, and the enable mode all that kind of stuff is I'm going to just highlight one telnet packet right click and I'm going to follow that stream so if you don't know this obviously telnet actually if you don't know this it's not obvious <laughs> telnet is clear text so if we look at the telnet session we'll see there's the password prompt there's my initial typo right and there's the correct password and then there's en for enable and then there's the enable password the other question um, we run into all the time with ping is, hey, these red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. Well, the blue is from the switch, the red is what you type in. So in this case, uh, the red is being sent by me and the blue is being echoed back because that's Telnet, right? Local echo. So you can see that there's the combination of blues and reds. And you don't get it here because obviously you type a password and that is masked. That is not echoed back. And there you go. So I threw two things into one. Hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.